I'll pray, sir. Thank you. Father, I thank you for this morning. It's um, in my part of the country, it's a gray, cloudy, cool, damp morning, but wherever we are, we are thankful for life and thankful for the opportunity that we have to gather together with other men, to be challenged and encouraged by each other and by your word. And we ask, Father, for your blessing on this time, that it would be fruitful in our lives, that we would leave from this group uh, slightly different from how we came into it for the better. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Chris. Steps up to the plate and hits a home run there right as we or as he comes on board. Amen, amen. Um, so this is our Promise Keepers uh, Bible study this morning. Um, our, our, um, our study this morning is uh, from Nehemiah 8, chapter 8, uh, verses 1 through 12, um, called Monday Morning Music. Uh, we're, we're getting these from Promise Builders study series book called Character Under Construction, and we're going through um, a series now um, talking about leadership and uh, how we develop spiritual leadership, spiritual leaders, and what do those uh, character traits look like, or leadership traits in this case, and today we're going to focus on joy. Uh, <clears throat> so let's be joyful, <clears throat> joy to the Lord. Um, so somebody would be ready to pick up on uh, and read uh, in Nehemiah chapter 8, 1 through 12. That would be great. <clears throat> For the warm-up this morning, I have to get my glasses. Um, the warm-up is that, um, don't you love it when you see a Monday morning commuter moving to the music? Don't you love it when you hear your teenager singing in the shower? And don't you love it when someone behind you in the checkout line whistles a happy tune? Why do you think we love such moments? And um, what is likely, what likely is true of people who have a song, a song? Well, it seems like we walk around with a lot of grumpy people these days, so it's really nice, uh, you know, when I, I, I am a whistler myself, but I don't hear hardly anyone else doing it these days, um, but it it does bring me joy if I hear somebody else doing that, I know that. It's like, wow, they're, they're happy this, today or in this situation. Yeah. It spreads, so to speak. Yeah, whistling seems like almost a lost art these days, doesn't it? Yeah. I can't hardly whistle. I try, but. Our lips are too cold up here. <laughs> Amen to that. I get them stuck together. Yeah, I'm busy whining because it's 59 degrees in Florida. Yeah, yeah, Tim told us it's like, was it two or minus two? No, it's one. It's <laughs> one. Window. One and probably feels like negative 10 or something. <clears throat> it's like six. I checked after you said that, Tim. It's like 16 here in Baltimore area. Even. So it's gotten That's it's been a cold week. It's going to be a cold weekend, I think, or maybe until Sunday. But um, anyway, getting back to joy. <laughs> it's uh -huh. joyful even in the cold, right? We stay warm. Um, why do you think we? Why do we love these love uh, these moments of seeing joy in other people or sharing our own joy? Um, my first cynical response is because they're pretty far, few and far between. Mm. I think. Uh, I think Go God ahead. wanted us to have joy. At all times, that's the way this world was created at the beginning of time, and it's just uh, 
uh, the thing that a person, even though they may acknowledge it or not, that they like to see somebody happy or not, that it's actually our, uh, it's deep down in our um, uh, being we want to have joy. Yeah, I think it is. Um... <clears throat> I've been I've been doing this men's ministry work for quite a while, and most of it was always on the, on my extra time. I'll say the time when I wasn't you know, in my vocational job, and um, it was a long time before I realized my vocational job was um, was part of my ministry, and I, I did. I think I probably kept it separate, but um, it was. So I was usually tired when I was around the church uh, doing things. And I had a pastor once ask me, um, you know, where do you, do you really have joy with this? And I was like, do you really have to ask for that? Cause I mean, it must not come across, but I, I do have joy. I'm, I have joy in my heart, but you know, apparently I don't, I don't smile a lot. So <laughs> it's not like a natural, um, a natural, whatever for me, um, but I don't know. Well, um, so the background for this week is that, um, for this, the scripture passage for this week is that <clears throat> the work of rebuilding the wall around Jerusalem was now complete, and they did it in 52 days. The workers had not only been required to raise Jerusalem's wall from its ruins with one hand, but to wield a sword with the other. The challenge of Nehemiah's leadership had been to direct his people under the worst of construction conditions. Ezra, the scribe, was instructed to begin reading the book of the Law of Moses. As the nation listened, a strange thing happened. Uh, today we'll talk about um, and discover Nehemiah's creative alternative to the nation's bleak outlook. Is anybody willing to read or ready to read? <clears throat> yeah, I'll, I'll do the tongue twister this morning. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Now all the people gathered together as one man in the open square that was in front of the water gate. And they told Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded Israel. So Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly of men and women and all who could hear with understanding on the first day of the seventh month. Then he read from it in an open square that was in front of the water gate from morning until midday before the men and women and those who could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive to the book of the law. So Ezra the scribe took on, stood on a platform of wood, which they had made for the purpose. And beside him at his right hand stood Mattitiah, Shema, Ananiah, Jerijah, Hilkiah, and Messiah. And at his left hand, Padiah, Mishael, Malkajah, Hashem, Hashbadana, Zechariah, and Meshulam. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. And Ezra blessed the Lord the great God. Then all the people answered, Amen, Amen, while lifting up their hands. And they bowed their heads and worshiped the Lord with their faces to the ground. Also, Jeshua, Bani, Sarabiah, Jamin, Akub, Shabbatiah, Hodijah, Maasiah, Kalita, Azariah, Josabad, Hanan, Pelaiah and the Levites helped to understand the law and the people stood in their place. So they read distinctly from the book in the law of God and they gave the sense and helped them to understand the reading. And Nehemiah, who was a governor, Ezra the priest and scribe, and the Levites who taught the people said to all the people, this day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn nor weep for all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. 
So the Levites quieted all the people, saying, Be still, for the day is holy. Do not be grieved. And all the people went their way to eat and drink, to send portions and rejoice greatly, because they understood the words that were declared to them. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, thank you for reading, Carl. Welcome, Tree. Um, <clears throat> Hello, brother. Yeah. Sometimes you wonder why they have to name all those people, right? Um, what? I wonder what. You, know, you don't hear about most of those people in other in any other parts of the Bible, but it's important, I think, for God sometimes just to call out our names. In this case, um, you know, recognize all these all these people and thank you for going through all those names because names are always seem to be the hardest parts of the book, and uh, and lineage matters too, right? Sometimes so when you go through it in other places. Um, I, I have something to interject on that when it comes to these names. Um, <clears throat> to me. Uh, one reason it's important to me, and, and that's why I took on the challenge, as I said, of the tongue twister this morning. Um, if you think about it like, uh, you know, high school graduations or uh, other large productions, if there's someone's name in there that you know, you know, you look through the program and or you look through the index and you try to find that person's name, oh, I want to see them. Well, to me, there was an importance of the people around them at the time that this book was written that that they would have known these people and so to see their names there would have been very special to them um, and i think as you said there's a reason god instructed them to put these names there these were people that were in his sights of uh, doing his work and so um that's why I, I do try to take time to to pronounce them close you know to give them the respect due to them yeah, well, again, thank you for doing that. Um, <clears throat> why do you think, why do you suppose uh, Nehemiah, Ezra, and the other spiritual leaders of Israel introduced the reading of the scriptures as part of the resettlement of Jerusalem? Well, they'd been away for quite a while, right? Yeah, about um, seven years <laughs> yeah they'd been away from their their homeland they had been um surrounded by another culture babylonian culture and um that wasn't there weren't a lot of people that are true to um to god's word to the god of israel uh, at least his word they had their own gods and their own ways of thinking and um ways of of um teaching also so how many generations that'd be two or three generations um in in babylon so uh even the children that were were raised i should say even the adults that were there doing the work maybe had not ever openly heard god's word and most couldn't read uh, at the time uh, themselves, so somebody had to read it for them. That's why they do the, that in the uh, public square, I think. Um, anybody else? What, what, what do you think? What are other reasons that they'd want to introduce reading the scriptures? Yeah, kind of goes back to the Vince Lombardi uh, theory, you know, we started out spring training with his guys every year. The first thing he did was held up the football. This is a football. Uh, it's getting back to the, to the basics, you know, the uh, Ezra and Nehemiah and the Levites, they all understood what you had just described, James, that these people had been away from the word for quite a while. So um, let's reintroduce them to it. Let them hear it. What about today's culture? What, what, what do you think people, I mean, it's been even back in the 90s when PK started, um, you know, it was a big deal for us to try to encourage men to get in God's word, to read God's word. But 
they really didn't. I don't think. Um, I mean, a lot, a lot. I guess a lot more did. Maybe hundreds of thousands of guys um, probably committed to reading God's word daily and things like that. But we're talking about you know 250 million people in the United States, and let's say half of those are male. Slightly less than half of those are male. That's a that's quite a quite a lot of people that aren't here even even in the word. Um, we almost it seems like we're not allowed to, even though we are allowed to. Uh, seems like we wouldn't be allowed to read scripture on a public square anymore. Those people that do <clears throat> try to uh, evangelize on street corners and things are usually shunned uh, today. And um, I don't, until more, in my, my opinion, I guess, and that's the reason I do ministry with men, is that until more men um, decide to, to read God's word, know it in their hearts so that they can express it, um, it it's, um, it's just not part of, part of our culture. Um, it's not, it's certainly not a, a joyful um, and positive part of our culture for some, for what, for, because people don't understand God, right? They don't understand what spiritual leaders, uh, uh, these traits of spiritual leaders, which are coming from the actual characteristics and traits of God, right? Love last week, joy this week. Um, <clears throat> I don't know. Sorry, I'm talking too much this today. Oh, and peace next week, by the way. So, <laughs> Um, yeah, um, this culture I means if you look at the question, I mean, I'm just looking at I'm coming back from sleep, I think. Um, after many last week, I was with my son at the Bible quiz, and um, it did good. So, if you look at the question, it says it's resettlement of Jerusalem. Um, the story behind the, the Babylonians is that when Babylonians when they are conquer some place, what they do is they bring the people from other place always and let them settle in this place. And from this place, they, they displace the people. So with that, the culture changed. Um, there is no, as uh, Brother Carl mentioned, that probably they didn't know how to read also. I mean, uh, and uh, the language has changed everything. And... Um, the, um, um, I joined late, but if you read the verses, when uh, when they heard this one, they cried. They beat their chest and they cried. Wow, is this uh, uh, the crying happens here? But uh, uh, it says that means uh, no stop. This is not the time of crying. Nehemiah. I mean, that's the reason. Uh, the beginning of the year, I took Nehemiah and studied that one. Uh, that's um, I know that means these people they do not know what is there inside. Uh, so it's good to introduce because that is the absolute truth that here, that uh, um, in Timothy, God says that when the word goes piercing deep down into um, our bones, also in the joints of the bone, the conviction happens with God's word. Yeah. So just like the Babylonians wanted to change the culture and change the <clears throat> The, the environment that people were, were in even. Um, Nehemiah was smart enough to know that he needed to change the culture back from all those other gods to understanding and knowing the God, their, their God, their, uh, the God of Israel and um, of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. <clears throat> as, uh, as our as Pastor Art like you know is tend to say, which is also it, it is so biblical um, because everybody has something they believe in, and um, all of those are not based on love, joy, and peace um, as their as their characteristics. So the resettlement of Jerusalem was. So the, the a need for re-indoctrination, right, as well. Um, 
Okay, anything else anybody can think of? Why do you think people wept when they heard the reading of God's word? I think there could be different reasons. Uh, some of them because of conviction in their heart that they maybe knew that the way their lifestyle was, that uh, something wasn't right. Then when they hear the words of what they know is truth, um, then it is a conviction. Some of them could have been feeling weeping in joy that we've, we've longed for this. This is what we've longed for. Um, I think there could have been a, a, a lot of mix for the reasons of, of weeping in this particular instance. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I was mostly thinking of the the conviction or maybe, you know, maybe the the horror of knowing that they had the truth available to them and that they'd been living contrary to the truth. Uh, disappointment maybe over, well, you know, why am I only just hearing about this now? Well, you know, it's, I could have, I could have solved my problems 20 years ago if I had known this, the scroll was here. I know, you know, sometimes, sometimes when I'm overjoyed, I, I weep, right? That I, I cry. It's, it's just uh, overwhelming, um, overwhelming joy, I guess. And yeah. A lot of times when I'm tired also. So, I mean, these people have just gone through a lot of work and I'm sure they were, they were also tired. So their emotions were broken down to a more, a, a raw state. And uh, I just find myself, you know, when I'm, when I'm broken down like that, when I'm just uh, kind of acting on and allowing the Holy Spirit to fill me, um, that I often cry as I'm overjoyed, as I'm jo as joy fills my heart. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I guess that is kind of the definition of conviction, is that right? Um, <clears throat> God's word just ha it has a way of of filling holes too, right? filling us up, uh, filling emptiness and, um, and, and that brings, that brings a lot of joy. Um, so Nehemiah, when he recognized the grief of the people that he was leading, um, what do you think he had in mind when he said to them in verse 10, the joy of the Lord is your strength. <laughs> Well, the way I'm trying to live my life now is that that joy of the Lord is my strength and, the, and the, no one can take that away from me. I have to give it up. If I can walk through the day, regardless of how many walls are falling down around me and I can keep the joy of the Lord in my heart, then I'm still a joyous person and I'll be able to withstand the, the, whatever it is. And they kind of going back to our last question in my own life, uh, you know, as 30 years ago, I read the scriptures and a couple of times in between then and now, uh, up until about four years ago, and I've read them many, many times now, but just a difference in where your heart is and where you stand in the world when you read the scriptures and what you're looking for and what you're asking for. Um, we're doing a 31 day reading of Proverbs right now in my other group and to really sit and contemplate on all the different things there. It's like, there's been many mornings I wept because I think probably the same thing these people thought, uh, like Chris and you both have said that, why, why wasn't I doing this? I've heard these words before that, you know, some of the people in the crowd may have heard the words passed down from through the generations, but they didn't see anybody living it or wasn't able to live it. 
Um, so I, I think um, just this whole spiritual awakening, what we're looking for right now in, in our great United States and, and the world, that spiritual awakening is what they're experiencing here. Mm -hmm. And um, I also think that means, right, means God gave this commandment. And um, if, for example, father son relationship, right? Um, if you make father happy, that's comfortable. And this dad will take care of the son in case of any trouble. That's uh, my perception of Nehemiah saying that when he know. You turn back. You heard the God's law. Now you are convicted in your hearts. But today is being that uh, a holy day, God's day. God said that rejoice and uh, um, you know rest in this. And when you uh, in that culture, um, they they lost the meaning of the Sabbath. Sabbath is right now. We, what we do, the shopping from the church, people go to restaurant, not thinking about it, of course. Uh, sometimes, most of the times, I'm also guilty. The people, the other person has gone to church and not, they don't care. I mean, so I say, hey, feed me, all right? That's the kind the conviction in that area was like that. And uh, now, when the situation, when all of a sudden, the whole Jerusalem stops, what will God do? God is happy. And when God's protection is there, Paul says that, in my weakness, okay, I'm strong because God is there. In, in Jeremiah, and that's when the next uh, book which I'm reading this year is that Jeremiah uh, chapter 10, we, I mean, chapter 9 talks about if you want to boast, boast in the Lord. So next day when they go to somewhere else, hey, what do you do? do? I mean, I was taking it's a lot day. What will God do? I mean, God is being uh, praised in everything. And the protection will be there. And that's uh, and verse 10 talks about that <clears throat> uh, your strength is where jo God is joyful in you, that your strength comes. That's my perception. Mm -hmm. I also see here because, you know, the study that we're looking at, you know, we were talking about love. Now we're talking about joy and you brought it to the, to the table that, you know, next week we'll be kind of talking about peace. Uh, even though the Holy Spirit hadn't been bestowed upon the people at this particular time, uh, the purpose of the Holy Spirit, a lot of them were the same, you know, uh, our God is the same forever. Um, and we're talking about the fruits here of the Spirit. So these people were getting a glimpse of what it was like to live in the fruit of joy. They were telling them to go out and eat the fat and drink the sweet, but he's also telling them, you know, to send the portions to those that didn't have it. So he's, he's teaching them that love, love thy neighbor uh, concept as well. Um, and these things, you know, the way that people were having to live the 70 years prior to this, it was probably doggy dog world, you know, just living day to day and trying to figure out what's where, where my next meal is coming from and, um, what is my direction? I've, I've been throwing all these gods out here that I'm supposed to worship and none of it feels right, you know? Yeah, I was going to, I was going to dig in a little bit to this, to, to the part about uh, go and enjoy choice food and sweet drinks uh, and send some to those who have nothing prepared. Um, so, and I mentioned you know, what happens sort of when I get tired and maybe they were tired from all the physical labor that they had had to do and fighting off, um, you know, intruders as they tried to build a wall. But, um, but, you know, eating and drinking is a luxury sometimes too. And to the people in, ba to, to those that were um, uh, in Babylon, not very many of those slaves that, that, that they were, they were made slaves when they came from Jerusalem not many of them got any kind of choice food and sweet drinks. Uh, they probably got slop almost, you know? Um, and so he's saying, God is providing this, go enjoy it. Um, and basically enjoy all that God is providing for you now. Um, oh, and don't overindulge because, 
because there are people that don't have that right also um so yeah i i think uh, you know letting god meet your basic needs uh fills your heart and that um to me that's the little bit i I don't know i just came up with that but it just kind of came into my heart that that that's what the joy of the lord is your strength means um to to me and in, in, in this or in this uh, in this instance, so God's joy or God's Holy Spirit gives us joy. Why is the joy of the Lord so strengthening in our lives? Maybe we just talked about that one a bit. We did, but I think we we also missed uh, one of, and it, it kind of leads into this. We also missed a point in there of where this. Uh, where this was done. This was done at the water gate. Um, the water gate was a place where um, they exacted judgments on people. It was a place where you took oaths. Um, but it's also in reference to um, the washing the water with the word, you know, just like we read in Ephesians where, you know, Christ love the church um, and he wants to wash with the water of the word. It's a cleansing place, this water gate. Um, so these people that, you know, the, the tears and stuff coming out, it was a, it was a cleansing uh, effect, not just a, an, a, an awakening effect, but a cleansing effect. Um, there was also another one in, um, I think it was John, yeah, John fifteen three, you are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. You know, so these these uh, people were hearing something that was cleansing to them. Great point. Mm-hmm. I didn't. Uh, I had, hadn't really put together the, the the gate. The why they put the the name of the gate, the water gate, in there. Awesome. We all make each other better. Uh, well, this this comes from uh, this comes from exactly what we're talking about. You know, I read the word years ago, and I read it many times. But until you actually ask the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you when you're doing your scripture studies, you miss some of these things. You know, you really do. You may pick up something else that I, I didn't. And like you said, that's why we're here. Uh, edifying each other you know lifting each other up and um you know, i love it when our brother shriek pops in because he knows a lot more of the theologies behind this stuff um which has given me a desire to look deeper in, into the scriptures when we're reading them i i like the history and i want to connect it uh, context of my i pray for context if something is coming that's the only thing we have one another brother said that one. Thank you, Carl. All right. Um, so in our in our hard hat area, it's, it's a little early to uh, to be finishing it be through with the questions so if anybody's got any other questions or comments or concerns to or, or issues to bring up on this study let, let's do that also but the hard hat area um quote from c.s lewis is that joy is the chief end of heaven mm-hmm. let that sink in a little bit there uh and then in john fifteen eleven, jesus says i have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Why must joy be included in the construction of a spiritual leader? Yeah, long time back I heard that there's a difference between happiness and a joy. Happiness depends on what's happening but joy is irrespective of the situations which, which are happening. 
So that when we have the joy, it's not we are reacting, but we are responding. Um, any situations, right? I mean, this, it's not what's happening will not be, but um, somebody lost a uh, you know, project as a leader. Um, how do you do? Somebody lost a bunch of congregation, the church. No, have you seen a person or are they worrying a lot and getting angry? So joyful person will be leaning on God because he is the only supplier probably for leader. I feel that that is needed. I agree. So a leadership trait, the leadership traits, <clears throat> um, as somebody said earlier, the fruits of the spirit. Um, the fruits of the spirit kind of define what God is doing in your life. And if, if you've got, if you're um, expressing the fruits of the spirit, uh, then you've got enough of that, those fruits to share with others. Right. And, um, and I think that's why it's important because you have to have enough of God to be able to share with others. You have to have him, uh, you know, filling your heart. Uh, as I pray a lot of times, uh, you know, fill me up, Lord, until I'm overflowing to those around me. Um, <clears throat> Yeah. That goes exactly back to it anoints my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Um, it, it, it all ties back into that. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Um, you know, if if you look in the index of your Bible and and just count how many verses uh, each, you know, each person's Bible may be different, but mine's got like over thirty or forty different verses cited for the word joy and. So if you dig into those and see all the different aspects of it, um, but the, the fruits of the spirit, um, they're not, they're not for us. The fruits of the spirit are for, for the Holy spirit to be able to produce in us so that other people can see them. Um, it's, it's a phrase we use when, when we do our crossroads experience a couple of times a year, there's let the, let the Jesus in you see the Jesus in me. Um, and that's where this joy thing comes in. If you have joy in your heart, um, we've heard many times people say how their countenance changed when they were touched by the Lord. Uh, if you are walking around with joy in your heart, you have a countenance on the outer portion of your body that people can sense. Uh, it's that energy that is flowing through you by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so as we develop those fruits, as we develop ourselves to allow the Holy Spirit to produce the fruits in us, um, that's where we start to feel that real joy come out. Um, and these people hadn't seen it for years and years and years, and now they've been told they can do this. You know, they've probably, probably been suppressed from the fact that they could even display joy. Uh, so now they're being told freely and openly, this, this is what you're looking for. <laughs> mm -hmm. Tim, you have anything to add on joy this morning? I'm thinking. <laughs> well, feel free. Feel free to, yep. to add in anything you have to well, share. Well, Carl, Carl says a lot of great things that uh, I, I agree with, you know, that... Uh, <clears throat> It's like you say that you can read the word and read the word and get something out of it. Then you can go back a couple of weeks later and you can see something that's completely different out of the same word that the whole Holy Spirit word uh, imparts joy to us when we see those things. That's a different word there for us. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Tim. Um, one more thing. Yes. Yeah, one more thing uh, I'm, I'm thinking, right? Um, can a fear and joy coexist? The leaders, they have to face some of the challenges. 
can they have the fear and have a joy at the same time? Hmm. Depends on what, depends on your okay. definition of fear, I guess. Fear um, uh, yeah. sometimes means respect, right? So definitely respect kinds of fear. Um, when you fear the Lord, you respect that's to me that's respecting the lord um cuz i don't um i don't worry about my physical or or other parts of me with regard to the lord um you know being taken care of or being hurt uh, by the lord so that kind of fear or your concern for your well-being right your health or well-being um can that enjoy uh, I don't know. It's hard, I think. I think it's very difficult. Um, but we've heard, you know, different occasions in history where, um, you know, Christians would be going to be burned at the stake or going to a beheading, but they're praising God the whole way, you know. Mm -hmm. um, that joy is still in their heart, regardless in the flesh, whether they fear you know, what it's going to feel like when the flames start hitting their body. Uh, I can't imagine that someone wouldn't still have a fleshly fear in, in a situation like that. Um, it, yeah. when, it, when he says, do not be afraid, um, that it's different than if somebody walks up to you and puts a gun in your face, of course you're going to feel fear. Um, but having the joy of the Lord and knowing where you're going when this is over with and you're living a righteous life, then at that point, it's a different kind of fear. You know, you get, you get the adrenaline pumping because that's the way God made our bodies. But if somebody no. pulled the trigger, you know, it's like, okay, well, I know where I'm going. So if you're going to do this thing, praise God, glory to God. Um, what more can you do? Right. Yeah. That's great. Um, example, Colin brother uh, that's meant for a leader that's important as a leader um, we face fear means anywhere when the smallest to the biggest organization but that joy should keep us um, and um, act talks a lot the people were uh, joyful when peter came back um, from just then uh, king herod he beheaded james brother of John, and then um, so they were praying when they arrested Peter, saying, hey, let God please, and then Peter comes back, but they were fearful, but yet when they saw him, joyful, fear and joy, still they were fear, it's what makes me, could be there, but they have the joy, and uh, at the tomb, when the other Mary, Mary Magdalene and the Mary, they went, um, uh, in Matthew 20, that's what I picked it up over here, saying that when, uh, see, I've told you. And then, so they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy. So that's the combination of any circumstances means with the joy of the Lord. Fear is yours. The joy of the Lord is your strength. I mean, the joy will come and that will surpass all the understanding. I don't know whatever it is. And the peace and joy will combine at that moment. I was thinking through, right? I Means, uh, yeah, for a leader, or leader faces what challenges, the fear, uncertainty, but they need to drive it uh, with joy. Otherwise, they are going to be insane. They're going to be tense. Well, Michael Martin. I'm, I'm sorry, but what I seem to find out more and more as I'm going through my journey is um, the way we're experiencing this love and this joy and the peace and things like that comes by our submission. You know, these people were caused to be submitted in a way that they didn't want to be, but now they're given the opportunity to s submit to the word and, and the God that they know is truth. And as we submit, that's what I've really had to understand when it says I've been crucified with Christ and I no longer live. Um, you have to submit, you have to lay down all those things. Um, and you know, Tim said he was 
you know, just listening and stuff like that. He, he tells us, be still and know that I am God. Sometimes it's best just to, to get in a quiet place and let God speak to you that way um, to, to grow these things. And sometimes God speaks to you in this small group kind of way too, through like I think Tim said, and, and others have said this morning also, you know, the joy that I get out of being here with you guys is that you bring other things to the table that maybe I haven't thought of throughout the week and, um, or, or hasn't been shared yet. And it's just, it's just, you guys bring me joy. So uh, welcome Martin. Uh, Martin's one of our, uh, state directors in Kentucky and uh, we're today we're talking about joy in the Lord and um, you have any do you have anything you feel like you would like to add we're, we are kind of finishing up about to go to prayer yeah I apologize James I uh, I okay. had this on my you know I was going to be with you guys at the beginning but I was studying doing a little bit of Bible study and of my own and I realized oh my goodness <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm running late, but anyhow, I just want to share this real quick with you. A brother of mine just uh, texted me. Uh, yeah, he just texted me a verse, and it's uh, um, trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on thy own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge Him, and He will direct thy paths. You know, and that's you know that's that's what it's about. It's just uh, really letting the Lord uh, lead us and uh, just let him direct, uh, direct our lives to what he'd have for us as we d follow and do his will. So I, I think, you know, that's, uh, for me, at this, that the timing is just, you know, it's God. And so I'm just blessed uh, to uh, be joining with you guys and, and uh, want to continue on. So good morning, guys. Well, good morning. And you're, you're welcome anytime, uh, all the time and anytime. Uh, so I'll, I'll read the response as a promise keeper at the bottom as we um, calm our hearts, as we be still and listen to God. Uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll go through you know, steps that are recommended through this study um, <clears throat> are to you know, be silent before the Lord and uh, think about what is he telling you through this study? And then also then uh, to express thanks to God together, uh, write in a prayer journal. And so if anybody's got uh, any answers to prayers from their journal, uh, please, you know, hopefully you will bring those up either in prayer or before our prayer. And, and then we pray for each other now and throughout the week. Uh, <clears throat> so my response as a promise keeper is that I will commit to memory Nehemiah 8.10, where, where it says, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. We've gone through that this morning. And number two, if and when I'm stuck in Monday morning traffic, I will, I will remind myself that my joy is in the Lord. So even being stuck in traffic, um, a lot of times when I was driving to work, um, I would put on a podcast or something like that, like a daily audio Bible and um, listen to the word of God. And then, and then, you know, this guy that has, that leads this um, podcast is um, kind of helps to explain things from his perspective, from uh, his, um, his learnings, I guess, I guess, um, he, he digs into various versions of the Bible, into various commentaries and studies and things like that, and he share and shares those. And he's been doing that for, oh goodness, probably 12, 12 or more years now, twelve or fifteen years. Um, <clears throat> anyway, um, so let's let's just be still before the Lord and uh, see what He has for us to. to uh, to pray together on, and then uh, I'll I'll close this out. Anybody who who wants to uh, pray um, this morning, we got a fairly small group, so go ahead and feel free to to have a one minute prayer, two minute prayer, praising God together. <clears throat> Dear
dear god thank you god for this uh, fellowship and as we see that as brother martin also popped in and said that trusting in you that that's a good verse to remember and uh, teach me how to implement it how to trust yeah. how to have an interaction with you um, and um, not my own understanding because as beings with our mind we are busy thinking something all the time and that we want to lean on you that thank you god for the joy your promise thank you god help us to work in such a way to it's joyful to you god I praise you, God, for waking me up again this morning, another day to serve you, Lord, and not serve myself. I ask that you walk with each and every one of us today, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will be there comforting and guiding us as we go through our day. Lord, you've heard me say it many times, Carl doesn't do anything very well, but when we call on your strength, Father, we can do all things. I thank you for our brother Martin popping in this morning and mm -hmm. giving us Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, Lord, one of my favorite verses that we should trust in you with all of our heart and not to lean on our own understanding. Father, there are many situations going on around us right now that, that we're praying for your intervention in, Lord, and, and we just come humbly before you this morning and knowing that your plan is greater than ours and sometimes our prayer, prayers aren't answered the way we want them to be but give us that trust and understanding in you that they're going to be answered the way you want them to be, Lord, in the way that it, you will magnify and glorify your plan. Father, we have brothers that are away from us this morning uh, serving and fellowshipping with others, and we just pray blessings on them to have the Holy Spirit be with them. We have brothers that are away from us this morning for other reasons of maybe shyness or not wanting to be here, Lord, and we just pray conviction in their heart that they know we're here for them and that we love them. Oh, Father, we thank you just so much for this group. Thank you for what it's done in my life. And I just pray that each and every man here can feel what I have felt through the brotherhood that's being established here, Lord. Thank you for your son, Jesus, and thank you for the Holy Spirit Go with us this day. Go with us this day, Father, and help us to stay on the right path. And, and once again, just thank you so much for these brothers here to support me. In Jesus' name. Thank you. Lord, I thank you uh, again, as Carl said, Lord, just, Lord, just thank you for, again, getting us up, Lord, and give us our health, oh God. Lord, you are, you are the king of our hearts, Lord, and Lord, we just, we love you, Lord, and, and we just want to bring you honor in all that we do and say, Lord. And Lord, as you just uh, take us through the days, Lord, and through this day, Lord, I pray that your hand be upon us, Lord. And use us for your glory, Lord. Use, for, use us for your honor, oh God, Lord, as we share the gospel, Lord. And as we just uh, share the light of the gospel, Lord, to those that are around and about us, Lord. And I, Lord, I thank you for this. This band of brothers, Lord, that have continued, Lord, to to follow after you hard, Lord, and, and to press into you, oh God, Lord, and, and to listen to what you'd have for us, Lord, to be shared, Lord. As iron sharpens iron, Lord, do we come together, Lord, just to lift you up, Lord, and and, and press into your word, Lord, to understand, Lord, that uh, what you'd have for us, Lord, as, as we grow in our faith, oh God, Lord. Lord, as we run that race together, Lord, that, uh, Lord, we might be two inches from the from the finish line, Lord, and and it gets tougher, Lord. It as as obstacles and things get in our way, Lord, to cross that finish line. But Lord, we're still in that race, Heavenly Father, Lord. We're still, Lord, listening to you, Lord, as you guide us and and give us strength and encouragement, Lord. And I thank you for these brothers, Lord, as they encourage me, Lord, on this morning, oh God, Lord, and how you just, Lord, you just do what you do, Lord. Uh, to bless us, Lord, to, to remind us who you are in our lives, oh God. Lord, I pray a blessing upon the brothers here, Lord, and I ask, Lord, that uh, put a hedge of protection around them, oh God, Lord, and 
and just lord as as we just move forward lord uh we get inch closer and closer lord and and uh, we just keep our eyes on you lord uh, we look to the hills where our, where our help comes from lord and that's in you lord we love you lord and we just praise you in jesus name amen Abba, Father, we do rejoice in this day that you've given us. We rejoice in every breath that you give us to breathe in your Holy Spirit and then share it with the rest of the world around us. Lord, I also pray for our brothers who couldn't be here this morning for whatever reason, uh, that you fill their hearts with your love and your joy and your peace, knowing that they are following you and knowing you and uh, you're directing their path. Lord, I thank you for this joy. We thank you for um, being you, for filling us, Lord, until we overflow. And Lord, um, it's really on my heart as we're going through a marriage challenge and, and uh, we're about halfway through focusing on the person that you put in our lives as our wives, as our, as our spouse, uh, Lord, or maybe for some guys soon to be spouse, but uh, Lord, just in the, the men that we are getting to know uh, through communication, through the technology that you give us to do things like we're doing here this morning, but to communicate with uh, our other brothers across the world, there's a lot of them hurting out there, Lord. And it, that, that just weighs on my heart. But as we talk about joy, Lord, um, help us to share our joy for what you're doing in our lives with those who are going through difficult times, whether it be a sickness, or illness, or uh, just the grief or despair of, of, of losing uh, one that means so much to them, maybe not. Uh, physically, but just in in the relationships that are breaking apart, that Lord, only you can really keep them together anyway. So Lord, I pray that as, as uh, we share your joy with other men, that they will see that it's not about us and what we know, but it's about what you are doing in our lives, that we're able to share hope and love and joy and peace, Lord, all the fruits of the Spirit that we can share with those that are going through difficult times. Lord, I pray for those that we don't even know about, which are so many in this, uh, in this current culture here that we have in America and even across the world, Lord. Uh, help, help us to, to change our own hearts, Lord, so that uh, we as men and those that are going through this, and those that are sharing, Lord, to focus on what you would have to fill their hearts with. And that is that love, that joy, and peace that's beyond understanding to most that don't know you. Uh, but Lord, we can share that with those men. And we pray that you will allow us those opportunities and that we will be obedient in, um, in that calling that you give us to love one another as we love you first. And we ask these for uh, bringing to fruition all of these opportunities that you give us, Lord, in the name of Jesus and his precious blood that saved us. So we do ask all this in your son's name, in Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, thank you. Amen. Thank you. All right, guys. You know, as we often say here, go and be the church. I was waiting for that instruction, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. God bless you guys. Love you all. Have a good week. You too. God bless.